child is the most unfair, unforgiving, stubborn, irritating, frustrating, laughable, and insane title ever made. When you first boot it up, you are so incredibly lost, unsure what to do or what your goal is. You might make it to a new region or kill a lizard or two, but eventually you will just give up. Trust me, alright? Every person I know that has played this game gave up on it at some point. This title is everything a video game shouldn't be. It's unacceptably harsh for no reason at all and it can seriously annoy the living hell out of you. But if you can push through that, if you can gulp down all the garbage that's on your path, if you are motivated enough to keep on playing, to keep on learning, you will find one of the most special and unique adventures ever created and you go from hating it to absolutely <laughs> adoring it. Now let's mention the elephant in the room alright? Yes, it is true, I've already made a video on Rain World about two and a half years ago, but I've never felt like I did this game justice, and I really wanted to revisit it for the longest time, and you know what? Now it is the perfect time, because Rain World got a big ass chunky DLC called Downpour, which introduces new creatures, regions, characters, mechanics, and so much more. This game was already massive before the DLC but now it just feels daunting but, but in a good way the world is just so exciting to explore and just genuinely fun to muck around with I mean look at this look at the chaos that is unfolding right in front of your eyes what is even going on so before we jump into the juice let's answer the million dollar question what is Rainworld exactly? I find this quite a hard question to answer because it is so different compared to anything else out there. Like what genre would you put this game in? Like if you get Mario for example, 3D platformer, Call of Duty, first person shooter, Hollow Knight, Metroidvania, Rainworld? Um, a 2D survival platforming souls-like with roguelike elements sprinkled throughout? That just sounds like a mouthful of stupid buzzwords. The best way the way I would describe Rain World is as a big jungle gym filled with weird creatures, centipedes, lizards, spiders, vultures, leeches, these things which are goddamn terrifying. It's basically a big ecosystem and the little white worm you play as called Slug Cat is prey. Almost every creature is trying to kill you and your goal is to simply navigate around them. Follow the little scrunkly that pops out now and again. On paper that's a fairly simple concept to get behind. But but in actuality, this game is evil, okay? It still beats my ass after years of playing it. It requires you to have a lot of patience. You don't zoom through it like a new Super Mario level. You need to be super meticulous and careful in how you tackle the rooms that it throws at you, while also making sure you arrive at the next shelter before the rain starts pouring down. That's where the name comes from. Rain World is a rainy world. Wow! What a name! 10 out of 10! It takes ages to get anywhere because you can't really learn enemy or item placement. The world itself might stay stagnant but everything else is completely randomized meaning you got to go out there and get your hands dirty and experiment with its mechanics to understand it. You can't slither through like a little loser. You either dive in, see what happens or give up and uh, be mad. It's a tough unforgiving game that throws you under the bus every second it gets the chance and dying is super punishing. It makes you repeat the big chunks over and over and over again because you made a simple little mistake. So what is your reward for traversing this god awful RNG infested landscape filled with weird creatures? A white pixel above your I, I wish I was making that up. This is your reward. No cool weapon, no new trick, no character upgrade, a white pixel that allows you to talk to some characters. God damn does this game got the biggest balls imaginable. Your actual reward ends up being learning how to master the game's mechanics and the game theory lore and both of these are top of the crop. When I think of environmental storytelling I think of Rain World. When I think of extremely simple yet deep 
deep and engaging combat. I think of TF2, but, but Rain World is a close second, okay? The amount of crap you can do in this game is overwhelming. There are so many little tricks you can perform to give you an edge, and all of it is accommodated with absolutely gorgeous set pieces. Every screen in this game is like a painting. The water bounces fluidly up and down, fireflies that zoom around in the shaded citadel, weird metal machines that tower over you in the background, clouds that cascade shadows at will. This game is absolutely stunning. And when you feel your controller vibrate violently all of a sudden and you're in the middle of nowhere, you begin to panic like hell. The rain is coming and you want to avoid it at all costs. So you frantically try to look around for a shelter while rain is slowly starting to pour down. Creatures desperately looking for a hiding place. The screen shaking like crazy and just in the nip of time, you make it. It's such an atmospheric adventure, and I haven't even talked about my favorite part yet. If you include the new Downpour DLC, there are 8 playable slug cats, each with their own abilities and adventure, taking place at different points in the timeline, making it so that certain regions are completely different depending on what time period that slug cats adventure takes place. I love it when games do this, man. I remember when Black Ops 3 Zombies concluded and the final map was this big mashup of a bunch of older maps and exploring that for the first time was an absolute blast. Now, now in hindsight, uh, this map is kind of mediocre, but Downpour has truly mastered it. It is the perfect combination of it both being recognizable, but fresh. You start to put the puzzle pieces together of what happened, trying to make a timeline in your mind. How did garbage waste get to the state it is? Why is it snowing in the Saints playthrough? Why are there scavengers at the top of the wall for certain slug cats but not for others. It has a beautiful way of poking your thoughts, making you ask questions of what happened without making it so overly complicated to the point that you get lost. I'm looking at you dumbass Freddy FNAF bear. So let me end this video by saying this. Rain World is not a masterpiece alright. It is super flawed and frustratingly annoying at times. But it's so different and unique to anything else out there that I just can't help but have respect for it. There is a reason why Slug Cat is in my channel banner. There is a reason why I've poured so many hours into this game. And it's fairly simple. It stands out, it offers something new while everyone else is trying to make another boring, uninteresting open world that is draining to play. If you can get over that slump at the start of being confused and lost, you will find one of the most profound, passionate and beautifully crafted experiences ever created. I mean that. And the DLC has just fine-tuned the entire adventure to such a degree that it just holds a special place in my heart. I don't know what more to say. Play this game. Yeah, take that, stupid scavengers. Now, now, this is a good video game.